Good morning and welcome to my new very little shop. I haven't made a video in quite a few years and this morning what I'm going to do is go through the procedures of completing yet another passive radiator uh, driver. Passive radiator isn't really a driver. Uh, this is what I've gotten so far. Um, unfortunately I started doing this project and didn't really think about uh, uh, take, uh, taping so uh, it's partly along uh, the process. Uh, the previous two, I have done two already, uh, speaker systems with passive radiators have turned out to be a wonderful success uh, I did have some comments when I posted video on one of them that uh, complained that I didn't really show the procedures of how to make a passive radiator out of an old speaker. Um, upon reviewing, I think I must agree. I made some presumptions that that uh, people uh, had some basic understanding. So uh, that being said, uh, I will try and explain a little more thoroughly uh, what I'm doing here. Uh, understand that I'm just flying by the seat of my pants. Um, I am not bothering, uh, nor do I have the expertise to do all the uh, mathematics, uh, figuring out the parameters of this. Uh, I just do it and, if necessary, modify it. And uh, um, so far it's turned out pretty good. The uh, first two speaker systems that I did were made with commercial uh, pa not passive radiators, uh, they were made with commercial woofers or, or mid woofers um, coupled with some good but otherwise unnecessary uh, uh, about similar size um, speakers, woofers that I did turn into passive radiators and I will show some pictures of them uh, as I can collect them. I have two of them right up above where I'm videoing now uh, that shows uh, uh, an example. Actually they're the first ones I made and they are they just fly. They're wonderful. At any rate we'll get back to this what we're doing right now. Uh, these were throwaway woofers that I salvaged from um, console stereo that somebody had given me of some sort. I don't remember which brand it was. But as you can tell, they're nothing much. The magnet structure is basic. Uh, the woofers uh, had just the uh, surrounds that were the paper. So I did acquire foam surrounds and I cut the uh, old surrounds away and I applied the new ones and painted the cone with some latex enamel to give it some stiffness. So I built some speaker boxes, I put them in with crossovers and a tweeter and was totally not satisfied with the sound. So I took them out and set them aside and I acquired uh, another stereo system with much better uh, woofers. Uh, they were Philips woofers and I did the same thing. I put the surround, cut the old surround away and put the new surround in and uh, painted the, the uh, cone with some latex enamel. Again I was not very satisfied with it. So uh, really not knowing what I was going to do with it and having these uh, as spare I decided that these would be made into uh, passive radiators and I would find a way to mount them uh, on the boxes or in the boxes that I had already assembled. Um, so what I've done so far as I said I put in the surrounds and painted them and then I did, if I can show this, wherever they were, there is the remains of the terminal and if you can see down inside, I'm not sure whether that shows, is the voice coil connections which are no longer necessary. Now I never bother trying to take out the magnet 
or the voice coil or any such thing. I leave it exactly alone. It doesn't seem to make much difference to the effect I'm trying to achieve. Um, and why get into all that unnecessary business inside there? So I don't bother. So what I have done is, uh, for this particular one, I went down to my woodworking shop and I determined what I wanted for a radiating surface. I'm not sure what you would call it. And I have some uh, eighth inch plywood and I cut four circles, two per passive radiator, and I glued them with wood glue and clamped them and let them dry overnight. Uh, then uh, you can see the, maybe the remains of the hole in there. I, I drilled a center hole. Actually that was part of the process of uh, cutting the circle with my router and a circle cutting jig. And uh, I mounted a, a, a bolt on there and I tried to true up and clean up the outside edge which I did to some degree. I'm not sure exactly how necessary it is to be perfect. Um, and then I applied a liberal amount of woodworking glue, which is what I use in my woodworking shop, and uh, glued them in place, let them cure. Um, I, uh, sorry, before I did that I did paint them black for no particular reason other than aesthetically, and uh, glued them in place, let them cure. Now I'll, I'll pick it up from there. Uh, what I will do now Again, I'm not 100% sure it's necessary, but it's what I wanted to do. You can use, I use latex, uh, acrylic latex um, caulking, and I will run a bead around both of them, and with the aid of my finger and some water, I will smooth the edge, trying to keep it off the foam surround, and then I will let it cure and probably touch it up because this happens to be what I have. And understand that uh, I mostly do this with materials I have at hand. There's no point in me uh, buying expensive this and expensive that to go in with this for something that might end up being a throwaway project. It's just something to keep me busy in my retirement years and uh, if it's a success then I'm all that much more pleased. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll start the process with this one and basically show you and then I'll go off camera and do the others and when it's all cured uh, I'll come back and maybe show you how I'm painting that. It really is rather straightforward. Um, after that I will mount them and uh, demonstrate how I've mounted them in the box and I will uh, either be very happy and proud of the sound that I'm getting out of it or I won't. Uh, at either rate uh, we'll take that to the next step. Um, okay so I just basically start getting a bead in here uh, trying to keep it as even as possible I don't know whether you can pick that up. I'll do the whole part, get it down in there, because what there is is a wedge of space between the wooden plug and the cone. Okay, again, wet finger. At this point in time, as you can see, it doesn't come out all that even, but I will clean it up. If it needs more, caulk applied later, I can give it a second coat. Now I also forgot an important aspect. It's a plentiful supply of uh, paper towel to clean off your finger. There's a little more needed here.
Okay, so that's clean. There's a little more on my wooden plug. Well, I can see a spot or two that I've missed. Again, with this, it's rather unforgiving. No, it's rather forgiving, not unforgiving. As long as you don't get it on the surround, which would defeat the purpose. And I have. But the nice thing about this acrylic, it does not off-gas to any great degree, so it's quite suitable for use indoors without giving people headaches. Okay, I know it looks messy. There it is. There. And uh, I might give it another coat. Now what it does, which I'm able to demonstrate, now I cannot demonstrate how this process has changed the free air resonance of the speaker because I have removed the voice coil leads. Now possibly I should have left them in place uh, until this process was done and then uh, uh, I could do uh, an A to B or before and after comparison, but I haven't. But one thing that I noticed with both speakers is that uh, when I tested them with free air resonance after installing this uh, surround, um, the original free air resonance was about uh, 80 to 90 hertz, which is really high and makes it honky and boomy. I didn't obviously like that. That was, I guess, okay for the times these speakers were placed in the cabinets. Uh, when I replaced these, put these uh, foam surrounds in, the free air resonance dropped down to about 40, 41, and it still had, it was very peaky, and I didn't like the sound. The bass was muddy. Um, I'm not sure if I describe it exactly, but it was very unpleasant. Um, when you give it the old thump test, you could pick up on that that uh, resonance. When you do it now, there's absolutely nothing. Wherever the resonance now is lying, it appears to be a lot lower, and that gives me great hope that when I install this in the cabinet, in the hole that I have had to, uh, uh, um, after building, uh, uh, cut, and the uh, other driver, that there'll be a pleasing, more solid base than there was before. But we shall see. Uh, these speakers are, n are, the only reason why I'm doing this is because I have all these drivers, didn't want to throw them out, nobody seems to want them, and so, with minimum expense and some of my labor. I mean, the the acrylic uh, caulk is probably four dollars a tube. I've used maybe ten cents worth. The uh, surrounds ordered from eBay were about four dollars a pair. I've had them for some time. I ordered them when they were very inexpensive. These drivers and the Phillips drivers came with uh, curbside pickup or uh, free uh, to me console stereos. Uh, one was a Philips, the other one I really can't remember, an RCA maybe, um, and nobody seems to want consoles so the thing came to bits. Uh, I took whatever I could use out of the consoles like the RCA had a good Gerard changer in it which I have cleaned up and uh, it's now in use. I like those changers a lot. And uh, the speakers are, meh. The, the, the tweeters are very, very harsh comb tweeters and so most of them just went for recycling. But these I have some hope for. So uh, when this is all done and cured and maybe painted, uh, I'll, I'll come back, uh, maybe have them already installed in the cabinets and we shall see uh, 
just whether this has been a success or a total failure. And I thank you for watching and for anybody who follows my uh, YouTube channel, um, thank you very much for your patience and your comments. Uh, I, I will try over this long COVID winter to be posting more of my projects. Uh, the problem that I have is that I'd rather just do them and the effort that it takes to tape and then edit and then post uh, keeps me from getting the projects done. I don't. I know I don't have the patience of a David Tipton uh, in Australia who I admire tremendously for his his energy and dedication and inventiveness for uh, the projects that he does. I also do that, but mostly uh, I do restoration of radios for myself and. Uh, customers um, offline. I don't, I don't tape what I'm doing there. At any rate, thank you for watching.